athletes relax, the joints, the kicks. B-ball, hardball, softball sticks, the blood, the sweat, the art, the smart, the brains, the boss, the soul, and heart. News and views, sports and sports. Legends, losers, rivals, myths, the balls, the victories, and the hits. Introducing College Sports Television. Never before had so many college sports been jammed into one network. College Sports Television, number one in college sports. The USCHO Game of the Week is the first ever national internet broadcast for women's college hockey. It is also individually funded. That's why the Game of the Week needs your support to maintain and expand its coverage. For more information on how to contribute, please call 212-933-0652 or send an email to uschobroadcast at yahoo.com. That's 212-933-0652 or uschobroadcast at yahoo.com. And the temperature reads but 9 degrees on this Saturday afternoon. But inside Thompson Arena, it should be a dandy. Two of the best programs in women's college hockey going head-to-head -head in what some ways could decide first place and the site of this year's ECAC Hockey League Championships. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Schultz. She is former Dartmouth captain Tiffany Haig back for another go-around. And, and Tiffany, you can look at the standings. You see Dartmouth won three points clear of St. Lawrence this weekend, and with obviously the winner of this conference being able to host its conference championship, pretty obvious what is at stake here today. Right, well, anytime these two teams meet, it's always, it always makes for a great competition and a great game, um, but especially after uh, the Christmas break, when, they, when there's playoff implications on the line, obviously the importance of the game is magnified, and I expect to see a, a great competitive game between these two teams. Let's talk about Dartmouth and St. Lawrence. You were part of this rivalry for a number of seasons. Some defining memories, some defining features of how these two teams typically match up. Well, my memories always of St. Lawrence are always that it's just a battle. Uh, St. Lawrence has always been a very gritty team, uh, not necessarily the prettiest team, but always comes to play and plays hard. They make you work for every inch, and I would expect nothing less of this team. Um, the biggest compliment that I can give to St. Lawrence as a former player is that they're a tough team to play against. They're not a fun team to play against, and I think that that's the biggest compliment you can give another team. The Saints come in ranked sixth in the country, 20 wins, just five defeats and two draws, but unbeaten in their last 11, and with a big win in the final minute of regulation last night against the Harvard Crimson, they have assumed the number two position in the league at 12 and three, but everyone's chasing your alma mater, the Dartmouth Big Green. Now, they have gone through the rash of injuries that seemingly afflicts this program every year, but they have handled it so well. We saw it last month against UNH when they didn't have Cherry Piper, they didn't have Katie Weatherston, they battled to a tie. What's been sort of the... But what you saw in that game, what's been some of the keys to this team weathering the storm as well as they have? Well, I think this team just has great leadership, uh, starting with Jillian Epps, uh, obviously coming back off the Canadian Olympic team, is leading, doing a great job of leading the younger players. I also think some of the younger players, especially the sophomore class, has a lot of character in it. Shannon Bowman, Maggie Kennedy, uh, Julia Bronson all stepping up. Um, and I just think that team does an unbelievable job of rallying around each other and really digging deep and everyone does a good job of knowing their role and knowing what they need to do. Carolyn Etier, a senior uh, assistant captain as well, has done a great job of getting her team uh, fired up and I think that you know every year we face a little bit of adversity with injuries as is bound to happen. Dartmouth traditionally carries a smaller roster which I think in some ways is beneficial um, just for getting the players together and letting them understand their roles and knowing the importance of stepping up in the situation. So I think that's a big key for Dartmouth is being able to step up in those situations. Dartmouth comes in ranked third in the rankings, third in the pairwise as well, 16-4 and 2 overall, 13-1 and 1 in ECAC Hockey League play. And as we referenced, if they were to gain two points today, they would be five points clear with a month to play, and they would be done with their series against Harvard and St. Lawrence, certainly an excellent position for Mark Kudak's troops to be in as they aspire to host the ECAC Hockey League Championship. Conversely, should St. Lawrence win, 
Just one point would separate these two longtime rivals as they come down the stretch here in 2007. Let's set aside for one more quick commercial break and then bring things back for the drop of the puck. Number six, St. Lawrence. Number three, Dartmouth. USCHO Game of the Week on the way in just a moment. Weekend. It's a Division Three Friday and a Division One Saturday on the USCHO Game of the Week. Friday night, MIAC rivals collide when Gustavus Adolphus meets St. Thomas. Then Saturday, defending national champion Wisconsin visits Minnesota Duluth. Gustavus Adolphus versus St. Thomas Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, and Wisconsin UFD Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, only on USCHO.com. Number three, Dartmouth, and number six, St. Lawrence. Longtime rivals in the ECAC Hockey League, and they meet this afternoon ranked first and second in the conference pecking order. Dartmouth coming in 16-4-2 overall, 13-1-1 in the conference. St. Lawrence nipping at their heels, 20 up, 5 down, 2 even, 12-3 in the conference. Brian Schultz, Tiffany Haig on hand at the rink in which she did a lot of damage during her career. And uh, Tiffany, in a nutshell, your expectations, your keys to this latest round of Dartmouth and St. Lawrence. Well, as I said before, Brian, this is always a battle. St. Lawrence always comes out hard. Um, I think one of the keys for both teams is to get up, get a lot of shots early. Uh, both of these goaltenders have been hot as of late, uh, make, coming up with big saves for their team. So I think uh, in order to be successful, they're going to need to get shots right off the bat and go the net hard. I also think uh, whichever team can establish the more physical tone early is going to benefit from that. I think that they need to send a message uh, as to who's in control. Dartmouth has an excellent power play. I think if they can get St. Lawrence to draw some penalties and maybe capitalize on that, that would be great for Dartmouth. Uh, St. Lawrence, the same thing. I think they need to stay out of the box because this Dartmouth power play is so dangerous. St. Lawrence in the road red with brown pants and black and white trim. Dartmouth in the home whites with the green helmets, green pants, and black trim around the green lettering. Home team will skate left to right. So glad you could join us on this Saturday afternoon. It is snowing. It is cold in Hanover, New Hampshire, but it is winter. And it feels like hockey season with these two rivals in what is 
best described as something close to a playoff atmosphere. Carly Clemens and Megan Gukian, of course, getting the starts in next. Clemens, the sophomore out of Alberta, who's had a great year, 14-4-2, and two, with a 1.7 goals against a 93% save percentage. And at the other end, Megan Gukian, the junior out of Victor, New York, 16-5-2 and two with a 2.08 and 92% save percentage. Underway with the first shift of the game on the far side of the neutral zone. Brittany Smith just lobbing deep for the Dartmouth end. Clemens will let Sarah Newham pick up. And a sophomore defenseman sends it up the right wing side to Sherry Piper, who just got back in the lineup last weekend in the big win over UNH. And such a huge force whenever she is available to Mark Kudak's big green. Yeah, Dartmouth obviously very happy to have Sherry Piper back in the lineup. Whether or not at full strength, she's obviously a huge benefit to have on your bench and on the ice, obviously. Sabrina Harbeck on the far side. First appearance by her as an angled shot comes in, and Clemens will smother the first offering of the day with Harbeck, who is second in the nation in total points with 45 just outside the crease. It's a good shot by St. Lawrence there, just getting the puck to the net. It didn't look like a dangerous shot, but it looked like uh, one of the St. Lawrence girls had Columbus a little bit screened. She was able to come up with the save, but good job on, by St. Lawrence to get the puck to the net early. Katie Weatherston's unit matched up with Harbex for this shift. Weatherston with a pair of goals in the win against Clarkson last night. And here she comes skating out of her own zone, trying to engineer a three-on-two as Harbex scrambles back to even the odds. Weatherston on right wing, boarded up by All-American Annie Gay. And Gay averaging a point per game in her junior season. Backhands on left wing to Chelsea Grills, who missed all of last year with an injury. Grills trying to center. That was knocked away. And it's Maggie Kennedy golfing it out to center ice. Gay on left wing, two grills. Poke check applied by Kennedy. Weatherston reaching for it. Comes up with it on the right wing side. Centers it to the cutting. Etier. Etier snaps off a shot that sails wide. And Weatherston scoops up the carom far side before heading to the bench. Down low, Cunningham in front. Etier turning it toward goal on Guki and makes her first save of the day as Lisa Batchelor chips it off the wall but can't get it beyond the blue line as Bronson holds in. Abby Bullard. Lone senior on the St. Lawrence defense on uh, the far side to Casey Hughes, and they're able to bounce it out of the zone as Courtney Sawchuk picks up at center. We're ridden off there by Bronson. Cunningham reaching for it along with Sawchuk. Neutral zone play with 2-10 gone by and a scoreless first period here at Thompson Arena. We see already the two teams going back and forth, exchanging chances uh, within the first two minutes of the game. Along the blue line, Bronson having trouble. It's taken by Crystal Connors. Connors knifing to the center of the ice on the backhand. Patted away by Clemens. Bronson and Mariana Locke go after it in the far corner. Bronson wins that free. Weatherston pushes forward, leading the charge on left wing this time. Kind of finesse away over the line. Dispossessed by Connors. And Crystal Connors, a senior out of New Jersey, circles back behind her own net. Up now to Mariana Locke. Lock on through to Allison Dominico, the hero of last night's 2-1 win over St. Lawrence. Dominico scoring a goal with 50 seconds left in regulation as St. Lawrence exercising the bright center demons that had not won in that building since the 2001 season. And put themselves in second place in the top. Yeah, St. Lawrence coming out here strong right off the bat. Got a few good shots on net. I, again, they need to get traffic to the net. I think uh, Clemens has been very strong in net for the big green. Off the draw, it's dumped down by Clemens. And Newham tracks it there. Wrapping it around to the near side is Sherry Piper. Piper playing on the line with Sarah Parsons and Jillian Apps. Parsons crossing it to offensive real estate. Hacks it toward Gukie. Paddles to the side of Brittany Smith. And a Canadian under-22 defenseman wraps around to Crystal Connors. Connors, a long saucer pass. Too hot for Dominico to handle. It sails all the way down as Newham will pick up. Newham wheels it back to the near side to Parsons. Parsons in her freshman season with 28 points. Runs into trouble in the form of the All-American Harbeck. But now it's Piper wheeling back to her own end to create some space. Piper lobbing on a right wing to Parsons. Parsons has it taken away by pushing Annie Gay. And Gay gets it deep for the Saints. And settling down here. Still scoreless three and a half gone. As Grills fishes for it along with Piper. Loose puck bounces behind the Dartmouth cage. Scooped up there by Minnesota native Amy Cobb. Cobb leaving now for Meredith Batchelor. Batchelor trying to slap it through the zone. It bounced off a leg and ricocheted back to the far corner. Harbeck trying to center from there. Intercepted by Janet Cunningham. And Cunningham with 10 goals in her rookie campaign. Skates it into St. Lawrence Ice. Far side, it's Etier starting the cycle that Cunningham goes through her stick as Nicole Ruda will give chase in the near corner. Monitored step for step by Brittany Mashmeyer. Wrapped around far side to Etier. Etier crashes into Annie Gay, lost her stick in the process. Fished up the wall by Tara Axtell. Taken though now by Ruda. Slinging it near side. 
Sue Schmitz drops it back behind the net to Maggie Kennedy. Kennedy matched up with Annie Gay. Up the wall it goes to Bronson. A wrist shot, no screen, gloved by Gukian, and she will hold on with a, an army of red shirts in front of her. These top two lines for St. Lawrence log a lot of ice time. Already we see girls Harbeck and Duggan out there quite a bit for St. Lawrence in the first few minutes. Also Annie Gay, uh, probably, arguably their top defenseman, is going to log a lot of minutes. Uh, She's already had about three shifts, and I think five minutes in. So. Early shots on goal, tally 4-2 in favor of the Big Green. Puck down low in the sink zone, taken by Casey Hughes. Hughes chipping around far side. Lisa Batchelor headed off by Kennedy. Kennedy and Bronson fishing for it just outside the far circle, but it's Axel winning the battle, and Tara Axel <laughs> scales it on ahead. St. Lawrence doing a good job of causing the Dartmouth defenseman to turn over the puck high in the zone there. Uh, they're all over the D and jump right on the puck. St. Lawrence unbeaten in its last 11. Talking to Coach Flanagan, felt like they got off to a bit of a shaky start. Felt like they didn't bring the work ethic every night in the first half and paid for it. They were 10-5-2 and two at one point, but 10-0-1 since then. Right, I think when you look at the St. Lawrence roster as well, they have a lot of uh, young players, a lot of sophomore and freshman littered throughout their lineup, and I think it's just a matter of time before they get accustomed. Obviously, St. Lawrence has always been a contender at the end of the season, and I think that Coach Flanagan does a good job of getting his troops to peak at the right time. And they've been to three consecutive Frozen Fours. And Nicole Ruta wrapping it through the center ice area. Jenna Cunningham steps through a check down low. Cunningham from an angle, centered it in front. It bounced off Kerry Wallace's leg and just wide of the far post. Now Ruta pushing it toward Guki and intercepted by Brittany Smith. Smith on the quick turnabout, five and a half gone in the first, slinging it rink wide at Courtney Sawchuk. Sawchuk intent to play dump and chase as she is at the end of her shift. Jenna Cunningham, the freshman for Dartmouth, has been really big for them, has come up with some big goals this year. She's a really hard worker, quick skater. Um, I think she wasn't as heralded out of this freshman class for Dartmouth, obviously, with Sarah Parsons coming in with the bronze medal, maybe got more, a little more attention, but Cunningham has really stepped up for the big green. Jillian Apps shot with a screen that did not go through. Apps always gets a lot of attention, and her next goal will be a new career high for the senior captain with 22 on the season. And orchestrating a left wing with Piper driving the net. She snaps one off, and Gukian caught that with the stick. Lively Karam on the near side to Dominico, and she lobs on ahead as Katie Gray skates back to pick up in her own end. The pass nearly turned over to Dominico, who rushes after it, but Clemens plays it away from the streaking sophomore. On the far side, it's taken back by Harbeck. Harbeck with a couple of moves in traffic, trying to use her size to her advantage. It's help from longtime linemate Carson Duggan as Chelsea Grills fires away. Whose puck is jammed in by Harbeck on the back side, and St. Lawrence grabs a 1-0 league as their All-American comes through early. We have to give credit to Harbeck on that play. She had the puck in the corner with two big green defenders right all over her, and she did a good job of keeping control of the puck and then getting out, it out to the slot. Her teammate took a great shot, but she was there for the rebound. Went hard to the net. There was nothing Columbus could do as it was behind her already. So Grill's wrist shot kind of went th squeaked through the armpit. It looked like Clemens was cradling it, thought she might have it, then all of a sudden started looking behind her, and it was lying just outside an end line. And Harbeck able to reach and tap home her 20th of the year. And so St. Lawrence grabs a 1-0 lead in the opening stage of the game, similar to the start they got off to against Harvard last night on route to a 2-1 victory. I'm sure Clemens wishes she could have that one back. It just seemed to squeak through. Harbeck is so dangerous. Not only is she big and strong, but she also has excellent hands and puck control. Cherry Piper on the left wing side, trying to use her strength against Abby Buller. Lost an edge in the corner. Gets help from Parsons now. Parsons and Piper trading places. Parsons leaving it for the senior forward from Ontario. Trying to give and go. That was broken up by Buller. And here's Bachelor now springing Sawchuck through center, but off her stick. And now Carrie Thompson for the big green. And as Bronson pushes it into space nicely, here comes Sarah Topol over the line. Topol with some momentum, but wrists it wide of the mark. And Marley McMillan scoops up the loose puck down low. Centered in front, Cunningham... Uh, excuse me, Terry Thompson did not have the stick down. It's taken now by Wallace for the Saints. Wallace protecting with that 5'10 frame. Winding it around near side to Sawchuck. And Courtney Sawchuck leaving it for Casey Hughes, who massages it lightly to herself off the wall, then to angles on ahead to Bachelor, who dumps it down from there. We have an all-Minnesota line out here right now for Dartmouth with Topo McMillan and Kerry Thompson. Standing next to a product of the state of Minnesota. <laughs> on the far side... Cobb leaving for Newnham. Newnham off the wall, neat leading Mark Marley McMillan, and McMillan will play dump and chase from the red line as Bowman gives chase along with Weatherston. 
Weatherston trying to slip a check down low. Nice work by Locke from her forward position. Weatherston, though, digs it free on the follow-up. Now come Bowman down low to help out her senior. Weatherston now racing after in the near corner. Wallace gets there first. Moves it up the wall to Dominico. The wall is shut off by a couple of big green, and so Brittany Smith will have to reset from down low. Smith, near side to Dominico. On the backhand, just uses the air to clear it down and get some fresh legs on as Katie Gray scoops it up in her own end. St. Lawrence is doing an excellent job right now in their defensive zone. Dartmouth is getting a few good shots off the rush, but they're not getting any sustained pressure. Uh, St. Lawrence had all four, all four of their players back that time with their fifth player off for a change, and when she got on the ice, she went straight to her D zone. They're doing an excellent job right now. Shot from long range by Gay Sales. Why? Harbeck, Grills, and Duggan, the top offensive unit for St. Lawrence, is out there right now. And again, we see, at least for the time being, the Weatherston line matched up against them. Remember a couple of weeks ago when Dartmouth played Harvard, saw Mark Kudak, even though he was on the road, really looked to get the apps unit opposite Julie Chu's line in that game. He said he might play a little matchup hockey at some point along the way here today as Sarah Parsons crosses into the high slot, creates space for a wrist shot, and a pad saved by Gukian as apps hacks it on the far side. Parsons trying to seal behind the net, but Gay wraps it on through to Sawchuck. Sawchuck leaving it now for Casey Hughes, and behind the net once again to Gay. Gay firing it hard off the wall. It's going to go the distance for an icing call. Midway point of the first period, and Serena Harbeck's 20th of the season has St. Lawrence up 1-0. St. Lawrence taking every opportunity they get to clear the puck out of the zone. It's a good job by Annie Gay there using the glass to get it out. Dartmouth finally is getting some sustained pressure, and St. Lawrence is just doing a good job of saying, hey, let's get it out of our zone. Let's not play around with the puck deep. Off the draw, it is Batchelor. Accomplished defensive forward for the Saints in her sophomore season, but already has 20 points as well. Sending it the distance as Clemens stops behind the cage, and now Etier on the far side. Carolyn Etier, senior assistant captain, crossing the center ice insignia with speed as she hits the line. Wrist shot, she scores! Carolyn Etier, end to end to tie the game at one apiece. This is an excellent shot by Etier going high to the blocker side of Gucky, and great placement again. Etier with a very powerful shot. It was Great release on that. And Jenna Cunningham and Nicole Ruda did a good job. Ruda did a great job of moving the puck up through the neutral zone. And Jenna Cunningham set a really subtle pick at the blue line, allowing Etier to get some extra space and go wide on the defender. So Etier with her ninth and a beautiful wrist shot. Top shelf to the far side as Megan Gukian uh, reassembling her entire gear after that. Not sure what happened there. It looks like maybe one of her... Straps like on her pads came undone, but yeah, kind of actually took off the jersey and reset everything. Now looks like she's ready to go, but the game is tied at one, so Harbeck's 20th and Etier's 9th. Yeah. Seeing Carolyn Etier score a few of those goals uh, in her career, she likes to go high blocker, and again, great placement on the shot. She is in that category of players with Jenny Huntingham that when Weatherston and when Piper were out, really kind of stepped up in the goal scoring department. We saw that against UNH. Etia scoring early in that game. Absolutely, she definitely has the ability to. I think that's a that's a key to this Dartmouth team. They have they're very deep and they have a lot of players that, you know, their top players obviously get a lot of attention and score a lot of goals and do a lot for the team. But when they're out, when Weatherston's out, when Piper's out, uh, they have a lot of they have a lot of ammo that they can go to on their bench. And that is really the thing with the Dartmouth, St. Lawrence, Harvards of the world. They have those star caliber players but on the days where they can get goals from elsewhere in the rotation they become you know, very difficult to beat and the puck pops out of play and we'll reset the draw in the neutral zone just over the midway point of the first Brian Schultz Tiffany Haig on hand in Hanover New Hampshire so glad you could join us for this USCHO game of the week video cast has had a goal for each side in the first 10 minutes and here comes Maggie Kennedy off the offensive line for the home team Found a center for Bowman, broken up by Crystal Connors. And Connors moving up the right wing side, gains center ice and chips in as Dominico will give chase along with Sarah Nuno. Now Cobb for the big green off the wall on the near side. Might have hit the referee in the back. And Nuno will have to reset from below the end line. Scales it around the dasher. Kennedy pushes along. Connors trying to seal. Nice backhand feed. Two on one created. Bowman and Weatherston. Weatherston. Cross Bowman, redirects, she scores! Weatherston orchestrating, Bowman finishing, and Dartmouth a 2-1 lead. Great pass by Katie Weatherston. They're just finding the seam. The St. Lawrence defender played it as well as she could. And again, the goalie has to play the shot on that. But excellent job by Katie Weatherston finding Bowman. And Bowman with the big finish for the big green. Well, 
Katie Weatherston had the entire arena eating out of her hand there, kind of selling past to the last possible second. She was square all the way, didn't really make any motion at all, just kind of drifted along. And then deftly flicked it across, and Shannon Bowman was right there to pop home her seventh. So, and give credit that on that second assist to Maggie Kennedy, a little backhand pass, uh, some traffic along the wall, and all of a sudden you got a two-on-one, and Dartmouth converts with two goals in rapid succession. They take their first lead two to one. Absolutely, Kennedy did a nice job there of being tough along the boards and getting that puck out. Again, high turnovers for both teams, so, so dangerous. Ooh, Piper takes a shot from behind from Harbeck, and Harbeck actually immediately reached down to see if she was okay, as there's going to be a penalty. And Sherry Piper, who has certainly not been treated kindly by the hockey gods when it comes to health, so talented and so strong, but suffering a series of ailments throughout her career, and it looks to be okay here, though she's a little bit slow in moving along, but bottom line is Harbeck to the box and Dartmouth to the power play, and it looks like Piper's good enough to stay out there and assume her customary point position. Yeah, Piper's so tough, but yet so talented. Takes a lot of shots, uh, depending on how people play her. She, you know, she gets hit a lot, but she's a tough kid. I believe she's uh, she's injured right now. I don't think she's at 100%, but she's just so talented and so such an asset to have on the ice. Well, at this point in the season, if you have any kind of an ailment, it's probably not going to heal until the season's over, but especially right. in her senior campaign, players like herself and Julie Chu at Harvard, not, not much reason to hold it back at this point. So Absolutely. Mark Hudak going with an interesting look here for the Dartmouth power play. Five forwards on the ice. And five very good ones at that with Weatherston, Bowman, Parsons, Apps, and Piper. And Piper is the engine up top, and she's got the stick. Cock has two defenders down, creates a lane, wrist shot. Nice shoulder save by Gukian as Parsons gobbles up the loose puck far side. Great fake by Piper getting both St. Lawrence uh, forwards to bite on that. Now low, Weatherston, backdoor, Apps, wrist shot. Oh, what a save by Gukian with the glove. Great save by Gukin there. Excellent release by Jillian Apps. Obviously, uh, their leading goal scorer, I believe, for Dartmouth. Shannon Bowman with a nice pass from down low. You see excellent puck movement from Dartmouth. Again, going with the five forwards up front is a little different look. I don't think I've seen that from many teams in the college uh, college ranks, but Mark Hudak ha either showing confidence in his forwards or... <laughs> well, he's got some forwards that can play some D, um, too. Definitely. Uh, Piper being one of those. The wrist shot by Etier. And as Connors forwards it out of the slot, but not out of the zone. So we have Etier, another forward, playing up top here on the second power play unit. She blasts away, tipped down and through oh. the legs of Gukian, but just wide as Nicole Ruda got a piece of that offering, and it trickled just, just beyond the post. Down low, it's Cunningham. It goes through her stick, and here's Kennedy. Got another penalty. This is going to go to the Saints as Etier fires away. Another tip from Ruda that goes just wide. Dartmouth now has a six on four as Piper races off the bench and the net vacates. Centered in front, Piper's knocked down in the crease. Wrist shot by Bachelor, bouncing puck loose on the doorstep, hacking at it. Cookie and did enough to keep it out. And St. Lawrence touches up. We'll have five on three for 41 seconds. It's a big kill right here for St. Lawrence. As I mentioned before the game, Dartmouth has such an unbelievable power play that they move the puck so well. And I think the biggest thing is they get shots to the net and they get traffic to the net, which is very hard for Gucky in the stop going to be big for St. Lawrence to see if they can kill this off. If they can kill this off, they can take the momentum and run with it, but if not, it's really going to hurt them. I think they need to work on staying out of the box. I'm not even sure what the last call was. It's going to be on Wallace. There was some contact in front with Ruta that was called. and So Wallace and Harbeck in the box for 41 seconds, and after Sabrina Harbeck's goal, Dartmouth has gone to work. They now have a 13-3 shots on goal advantage. They have a 2-1 lead on the board, and a golden opportunity for Moore here with a half a minute and two of St. Lawrence's better players sitting in the sin bit. Brittany Smith down low, trying to protect against the host of Dartmouth players. Does a nice job to work it free to Annie Gay, and Gay will get the clearance, so that's going to knock off most of the five on three as Clemens stops the side for Jillian Apps. Apps behind her own cage, cautiously forward. Apps robbed on that most recent sequence by Gukin. We saw that exact same tic-tac-toe play pulled off against Harvard two weeks ago with apps on the finishing end, but there Gukian said no, and now it's five on four for a minute 20 as Piper navigates calmly through the center ice area. Piper from long range with a drive. It caught a St. Lawrence stick and redirected wide. Down low, it's Parsons. Parsons with 20 assists in her freshman campaign. It rotates it up top to Sherry Piper. Minute to go on the power play. Far circle, Parsons winds, fires. In front was Weatherston, but couldn't come up with a follow. Puck pushed behind the net. Harbeck is out of the box and into the play, and Brittany Mashmeyer clears to the blue line where it's gloved down neatly by Piper. Now to Parsons outside the far ring, back up top. Piper on the swing to Apps for the one-timer. Caught the leg of Sabrina Harbeck and a ricochet back out of the zone. Good break for the Saints as Piper comes back to her own blue line and leaves now for Sarah Parsons. 
Parsons wraps to Katie Gray, trying to head man for Ruta. Too far for her and taken back by Mashmeyer. So the Saints thus far doing a nice job on their kill. Only 29 seconds for them to get through here. And six minutes showing on the first period clock. Dartmouth two and St. Lawrence one. So difficult with Dartmouth having four Olympians on their power play. Who do you cover? I think that's the struggle that St. Lawrence is facing right now, but they only have 22 seconds left to kill and have done a good job. Well, if nothing else, it's, it's, I imagine it's very tough to be aggressive. You almost have to be passive because of the skill level and the way those players can move and handle the puck. Absolutely. If you overplay or overcommit to any one of those players, they're going to burn you by finding someone that's open. 22 seconds for the second Darvin power play to work with here with a draw just outside the zone. It's controlled by the Saints. Andy Gay will push it all the way down once again. So... St. Lawrence in a critical situation for them, down 2-1 and facing a 5-on-3. Comes up with the big kill, and now Crystal Connor is looking to transition to offense on the far side, dispossessed by Etier. And Etier, who scored Dartmouth's first goal, moves through center. Etier on left wing has Cunningham driving. The wrist shot is swallowed up by Gookie and high on the crease, and she holds on. Wallace out of the box, St. Lawrence back to even strength. Sure that Paul Flanagan is telling his team that we need to get some shots on net. Can't give anything up before the end of the period. So we'll see how St. Lawrence responds now that they're back to even strength. Those recent power plays shots mounted for the big green. Now 15 for the home team to just four for the Saints. Far side, it is Thompson. Buck golf behind the cage. Topol stepping after it there, but taken now by Buller. Bullard up the wall, held by Cobb. Cobb with a wrist shot, paddled aside by Gukian. Buller tips it free to Axtell. And Tara Axtell finds Courtney Sawchuck, her classmate on left wing. Sawchuck, the freshman, over the Dartmouth line, but I believe we're going to have the call for offsides on the Saints with five to play in the first. Saints did a good job early on of just keeping the game simple, getting the puck deep. I think that they need to get back to that a little bit. Obviously, we're thrown off with a few of those uh, penalty kills that they had to do, but right there, just get the puck deep, chase it. Work your forecheck. St. Lawrence is so good on their forecheck and at causing those turnovers that I think that would be most beneficial to them at this point. Far side in the neutral zone, Lisa Batchelor sealing it deep behind Clemens's cage. Clemens stops for Sue Schmidt and the Wisconsin native. Tips to Bronson. Bronson's wraparound hit the referee in the skates, so she'll have to try it again from the far corner. Lost her edge. It's held along the blue line, thrown into the circle to Axtell. Tara Axel now to Sawchuck. Sawchuck in front. Axel on the backhand. And Clemens, a nice pad save as she covers. Nice save by Clemens. Let's do a little two man game there between the two Saint rookie forwards, Courtney Sawchuck and Tara Axel. It's still 2 1 big green. Etier and Bowman for the home team. And Sabrina Harbeck's 20th for the visitors. See Harbeck's line lined up against uh, Apps' line again. Wonder if there's some matching going on there. Well, Mark Kudak has the last change. This time he does fight fire with fire as Harbeck wins the draw, wrists it toward Clemens, and well, some traffic in front was able to see that one and gobble it up once again. Again, good job by St. Lawrence just getting the puck on net. I think that's a key. Dartmouth has been shooting the puck a lot and out shooting the Saints quite badly right now, but the key is just to get a few shots on net, maybe not dangerous, and get people going in that can poke in the rebounds. Clemens is so good on the first shot. Off the draw, it's taken by Bachelor for the big green. Harbeck and Grills in the vicinity, but chipped around near side to Piper. Piper drops it back to Gray. Gray on the bump, funny hop, went right to Chelsea Grill. She wheels it off the end line, centers it in front, but knocked away alertly by Parsons, and Parsons steps forward through center. Was slashed along the way, but stays with it. And pushes it to the near corner and matches up now with Annie Gay. Gay wraps it around where it's taken by Jillian Apps. Apps trying to find the outlet from the pass too hard for Sarah Newton to get over and collect. So she'll have to skate all the way back down and pick up in her own end. Newton's long head man now to Piper. Broken up and taken by Connors. Sarah Newton once again for the big green. Piper's still out there. Chips it on ahead looking for Weatherston. Went through her stick and taken back by Kerry Waltz. Piper's caught out here on quite a long shift. The Weatherston line has... Partially come on. Weatherston and Bowman are out there. Maggie Kennedy is not. And now Piper heads off for number nine. As Newnham and Wallace skate after it down low. Kerry Wallace. Mobile defenseman at 5'10", but lost to Weatherston down low. And she fires it high off the glass and out of the zone. Puck going all the way down. And Lineson makes the call for an icing with 3.14 to go in the first. And Dartmouth up on top, 2-1. to one. St. Lawrence has some excellent defensemen in Annie Gay, Kerry Wallace, and Brittany Smith especially. All three of those defensemen doing a great job of 
making good decisions, knowing when to carry the puck and join the rush as Wallace did there. And Brittany Mashmeyer, who just turned 18 this January, was actually named the top defenseman in Canada's under-18 championships last year. So a lot of promise in that St. Blue line core as Carolyn Etier moves over the line on right wing, steps through the Wallace check. Etier going to protect against the tall defenseman. It's help from Cunningham. Now poke checked away by Smith. And on through to Bachelor, who gets it free to Sawchuk. Sawchuk with some space, operating one-on-one -on -one against Bronson. Now cuts into traffic in the middle. And loses the puck to the second defender as Cunningham banks it on ahead to Etier. Etier takes a couple steps over center, chips it deep. Looks a little tired as she stays on the forecheck against Gay. Gay, near side Sawchuk, the bouncing diagonal puck, reaches center ice, but it's taken back by Piper. Piper, knifing along the blue line, slaps it behind the net as Parsons gets together with Gay in the near corner. Parsons wins the puck free as App set up in front. There's Piper with a redirect save by Gookie and paddle down, and Andy Gay. Lifts it to the blue line and beyond. As I said earlier, St. Lawrence doing a good job of getting all five of their players back in the D zone to help out uh, the goalie. One thing they need to be careful of is causing a screen themselves, making it a little hard on Gukian. Parsons in front took the pass from Piper off the skate and it rolled in on Gukian who clamped it. So another draw in the St. Anne is at top Dartmouth line. A little tweak from earlier in the year. Earlier in the year was Piper in the middle. And now she's out playing on the wing with Parsons at the center position. Wonder if that's due to uh, Piper's injury, if it's hard to take face-offs. Talking to Mark Huda, he said he had a pretty much a, a no-lose situation. He feels like they're both very good natural centers, and right. Parsons had time to really play the middle when Par Piper was injured, so... Maybe he just doesn't want to break up the rhythm that she's in. But you're right. I mean, we saw that with Harvard. They put Julie Chu on the, on the wing for a couple games, but her ankle was uh, worse than it is now. So either way, it's a formidable trio they send out there. As Brittany Mashmeyer deals it up to Sabrina Harbeck. Harbeck's pass errant went back to Gukian, who banks it on right wing to Carson Duggan. And Duggan quietly doing what she does in her sophomore season. Had over 20 goals as a freshman at 17 in her second year. Nice job by Guki and that pass up the boards. It's so nice to have a goalie that's able to play it. It's really helpful. It's something small, but you really appreciate it as a player. Far side, it's Cunningham for Dartmouth, matched up with Wallace. Bug free, though, by Etienne. Etienne to the point to Bronson with a bouncing puck. Never settled down for the sophomore defenseman, and so Dartmouth will reset as we come up on the final minute of play here in the first period. Big Green with a 2-1 lead, pressing for more as Cunningham skates down low. Cunningham centers it in front. It bounces off a stick. The follow-up by Bronson is blocked by the legs of Connors. Now a wrist shot by Ruta, blocked away by Gukian as Crystal Connors again gathers the follow and slingshots her own net, skating forward through center. Left wing side to Dominico. Dominico with the dump down. Connors gets a touch. Bronson contesting for it, as is Etier. The rolling puck to the near side, to the far side circle, excuse me. And now it's Ruta with 34 seconds, sending on ahead. You'll hear from both head coaches in the first intermission, Paul Flanagan and Mark Kudak, as Jillian Apps pursues an offensive ice. 20 seconds to go in the period. Pushed up the line, though, to Dominico. A wrist shot stick to side by Clemens. Meredith Batchelor scoops up the loose puck, finds Piper, hands off to Parsons. 12 seconds on ahead. Apps had to go through her stick. Taken back by Grills, who rotates it to Batchelor. Batchelor dumps it down. And as Clemens stops it behind her cage, there's only three seconds on the clock. That should just about do it for the opening period of play. And St. Lawrence, which struck early, then had to withstand a furious storm from the Dartmouth attack. And Harbeck for the Saints, SCA, and Bowman for the Big Green. It's Dartmouth 2 and St. Lawrence 1 after 1. 